please welcome Angela Johnson Reyes. my sixth hour special here at the historic Ryman Auditorium. What a blessing. I've been doing stand-up comedy since I was 24 years old. I am now 40. Oh, thank you for cheering for that part. I'm getting older. I'll be honest, having a hard time with it. I thought I was gonna be the girl that no matter what age I was, I was just gonna embrace it. Like, that's me, yes, queen, yes. <laughs> Turns out that's something you say in your 20s. <laughs> then you get to your 40s and you're like, ooh, no queen, what happened? <laughs> oh no, that's too much eyelid. <laughs> it's scary getting older. It's scary for women getting older. Because men, if you get gray hair, that's sexy. That's salt and pepper, hey. <laughs> Women, we get gray hair and it's like, oh. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> That's not fair. I gotta start changing some things about my life. I can't keep shopping at the same stores I used to shop at. Like Forever 21. <laughs> no, you're not. Turns out, that was a lie. <laughs> I cannot be in line behind some 21-year-old buying the same dress as her. She's out here living her best life. I'm trying to remember to take my vitamins. <laughs> we like the same dress for different reasons. She's like, ooh, has pockets for my ID. I'm like, ooh, pockets for my Tums. You gotta put that down. Go to Ann Taylor Loft where we belong. Go to White House Black Market. Do a loop de at Talbot's. Pass by J. Jill. Peek your head in at Chico's. And then go home because your feet hurt. I'm approaching the age where I'm gonna start getting my clothes the same place I get my groceries. Say I won't. <laughs> you will catch me at Costco. <laughs> yeah. About to get them Kirkland jeans, them Kirkland socks, that Kirkland body wash. Hey, this Kirkland gang gang, what? <laughs> it's about to be my new Tuesday. I'm gonna start out front. Give me a hot dog and a soda for a dollar fifty. <laughs> then I'll flash my VIP card and mosey on in. <laughs> I start with a lap of samples. Then I take my hair out of my ponytail, make a lap in the other direction. <laughs> Round two. Hey, but if you come in for a second sample at Costco, be warned. These sample ladies get offended. They act a type of way if you come in for a second sample. Like they have been baking from scratch all day long. <laughs> like really, Beth? <laughs> Just give me another chicken tender, why you gotta do this? <laughs> it's embarrassing enough just asking for a sample. <laughs> it's embarrassing, right? Because you have to pretend like you've never heard of this product before. You said it's a tender? <laughs> and you dip it? <laughs> sure, I'll try one. <laughs> I 
be coming up with lies just to get a second sample. I do, I'll be like, I'm sorry, can I get another one for my husband who's really hungry? Where is he? Oh, he's at home. I forget that I'm a little bit famous and sometimes people recognize me because one time I came in for a second sample and the sample lady was like, I've seen you. I was like, on TV? She goes, no, this is your third time. Mind your business, Beth. <laughs> it's hard getting older. There's too many acronyms to keep up with now. Like my friend texted me the other day, she was like, T-L-D-R. I was like, what's that? She said, too long, didn't read. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, too short, didn't understand. I know BRB and LOL, that's it. And I have come to realize that I am far too generous with my LOLs. <laughs> LOL has become a common courtesy. It's just a thing you say. Like another common courtesy, if somebody is next to you and they sneeze, what do you say? Bless you. But are you really blessing them from God? <laughs> no, it's just a thing you say. When your friend texts you and they're trying to be funny, what do you say? LOL. Did you really laugh out loud? <laughs> no, you didn't. At this point, LOL just means I have received your text. <laughs> if I reply to your text with LOL, at most, a little bit of air came out my nostril. If I reply to your text with LOL, this is how I read your text. <laughs> like, it was funny, but I don't know how to type back. <laughs> if I reply to your text with ha 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 ha, that's funny. If I reply to your text with ha 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 ha, like B-W-H-A-H-A, -A -H -A, that means that was so funny I had to spit something out my mouth. If I reply to your text with rows of ha 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 ha, I start using other letters like H A J K ha 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 Q R S T ha ha ha. That means that I said something funny and I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> it's hard getting older, but no matter how old I get, I will always be younger than my sister. Okay. Sisters, little sister, any other little sisters here tonight? Little sisters? Yes. Dare I say the little sister is the best sister? Probably because the older sister is exhausted from having to raise the rest of us. Right? Because when mom was at work, she had to cook, she had to clean, she gave herself spanking privileges. My sister was stressed out by the time she was 13. We'd catch her on the side of the house smoking those candy cigarettes. There was a dark period of time where she was going through about six packs a day. Probably because those things only had one puff of smoke in each cigarette. Those were some wild times, man. We'd be at the ice cream truck ordering fake cigarettes, fake chewing tobacco. I was nine years old doing lines of lemon salt on my hand. <laughs> wild. I am my sister's little sister. We grew up best friends. We're still best friends. I talk to my sister like five times a day, which is great for me, not so much for her because she has a real job. And I call her when she's at work, so she answers the phone in her work voice. Hello. <laughs> I go, hi. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> oh, nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> Dang, you work every day? <laughs> mm-hmm. Then 
Anyway, I was watching this show last night. It was real good, but then I fell asleep and I had the craziest dream. I was hiking up this mountain and there were these little birds in my shoe that kept chirping at me. Then I get to the top of the mountain and grandma's house is there, but not grandma from San Jose, grandma from Reno. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. Anyway, what are you doing? Still working. Okay, call me later, bye. And I hang up, only she doesn't call me later. So I have to call her later. But she's at work, I don't wanna be a pest. So I give it like at least an hour. Then I call her back, now she answers the phone, no more work voice, now she has deadlines, she has things to do. Now she answers the phone, what's up? Oh. Um, real quick, um, do you remember when dad used to take us camping? Yeah, and remember how we always used to have those Dorito sandwiches with pickles in the middle? Yeah, those are good, huh? And you think she'd be pissed because I'm wasting her time, but now we're talking about food and food is our jam, so she participates. Those were so good. I haven't thought about those in forever. I know. Do you ever think about Chef Buerdi raviolis? <laughs> yeah. Do you ever think about fish sticks? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll call you later. Bye. <laughs> if I ever call my sister and she doesn't answer the phone, I automatically assume it was a mistake. She left her phone in the bathroom. I should definitely call her right back. <laughs> and if she still doesn't answer the phone, then I wait for the text message from her that says, on a conference call, what's up? If I don't get the on a conference call, what's up text, then I know for a fact she's probably being attacked and I should definitely call her till she answers the phone. <laughs> But she loves it though, you know what I mean? Especially when she's real busy at work, I'm like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Sometimes I call my sister and we don't say anything at all. We're just on the phone. And my husband doesn't get it. He's like, what are you doing? Hang up the phone. I'm talking to my sister. But neither one of you are saying anything. Yeah because we're thinking about what we're gonna say next. <laughs> I love hanging out with my sister. We hang out all the time. Although it's been difficult over the past few years because of the pandemic. And I find it funny that everybody experienced it differently depending on what part of the world you live in. Like I remember when things first started going down in 2020, we were watching the news and it was like, Everybody in Italy was dying. Everybody in Spain had to stay in the house. Everybody in Florida was on spring break whole time. <laughs> Just wowing. I don't even know if they heard about COVID. Cause they were at the club every night like, hey, I'm a savage, yeah. Bleshy, blushy, bleshy, yeah. And I was at home watching the news like, Florida, what are you doing? You're embarrassing us. I remember when things started getting real serious and they were like, all right, nobody can go to work, only essential employees. And first of all, let's give it up for any essential employees that are here tonight. We thank you. We appreciate you, we are grateful for you. Whether you were in the ER or at Trader Joe's. <laughs> it was a scary time, we didn't know what was happening and you put that Hawaiian shirt on and you showed up. <laughs> we appreciate that. It was an emergency, I needed my honey sesame cashews. They said only essential employees can go to work. So in my mind, I was visualizing all these high rise buildings empty, cubicles empty, offices empty. It did not compute in my brain that that also meant TJ Maxx was closed. <laughs> because I went to TJ Maxx and the doors were locked. 
And I was like, what's this? They said, it's a world pandemic. I was like, yeah, but at TJ Maxx though? Isn't this essential? It is for me. Any other Maxinistas in the building tonight? Yes, Maxinistas, we go to TJ Maxx when we don't need anything. It's just a part of our mental health day. We just wanna go look at stuff and smell candles. I feel good at TJ Maxx knowing that anything I would ever need in life, I could get right here in this store. <laughs> Whatever you need. You want a new outfit with a matching purse? We got you over here. You want some random spices you'll never find anywhere else? <laughs> over there by the lentil chips. <laughs> you want some makeup for 50% off? Yes, I do probably seven years old. But it's Urban Decay for $3.99. By that point, it has Urban Decayed all the way. It's as if TJ Maxx was saying, here, you throw this away. TJ Maxx, but they always get me at the end in that zigzag register line, right? Where they have all the last minute buys, all the things you didn't know you needed in your life. I can be walking around TJ Maxx for like an hour, I have two things in my cart, then I start making my way through the line. By the time I get to the register, 87 items. All right here in the home stretch, you start walking through, you're like, oh wow, candles, coffee mugs, dog treats, slippers, wow. And then the line starts moving too fast. You're like, wait, I didn't get to see everything yet. Hold on. So I just wanna smell that candle, excuse me. Sorry about that. Ooh, God, no, don't smell that, it's bad. Ooh, don't do it. Love TJ Maxx. The doors were locked, I couldn't get in, I tried. <laughs> it's two o'clock. This is getting serious. <laughs> A lot has changed since COVID. Globally on a world scale, things have changed. But even individually in our own lives, we have all experienced change in some way. Like I know people who have quit their careers, quit the gym, <laughs> quit their marriage. A lot of divorces in 2020. People are like, whoa, 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 I didn't sign up for all this. Actually, you did, till death do us part. Yeah, but every day though. <laughs> we had some changes happen for us as well. Like right in the beginning of the quarantine lockdown when everybody was losing work, my best friend and her son moved in with us. And then what happened was, is they're still there. Yeah, we had said we didn't want kids, and then we adopted a single mom. <laughs> it's a blessing. <laughs> they move in with us, and now we look like we have our own big love situation happening. Because <laughs> from the outside looking in, it looks like we have a husband, two wives. <laughs> like I imagine when they first moved in, my neighbors were like, oh, that's it's nice, her sister's moving in for a little while. And now that they're still there, they're probably like, wait, that's her sister or her sister wife? <laughs> and my friend that moved in, she's beautiful. Just 
a stunning human being. So people would message me and be like, aren't you a little concerned having a beautiful woman around your husband all the time? And I was like, no, not even a little bit. Like if anything, she got me to step my game up. She did, because like when she moved in, I started doing that one thing, um, what do they call it, try? <laughs> I started trying. I started wearing clothes with zippers and buttons again. <laughs> hey, look at me go. I had to step my game up. Not because I was concerned about my husband, I just didn't want the neighbors to think that she was wife number one. <laughs> Her son Elijah, he was 10 years old when they first moved in. And he's used to being parented by one person, a single mom who's doing the best she can. So he knew how to work the system. <laughs> then they move in with us and now he has three adults looking after him. He loves that part. And we all have a role in the house. Penelope is his mom. She tells him what to do and what not to do because she's the mom. But if he doesn't listen, that's when my husband, Tio Manuel, steps in. Tio Manuel is like the law of the house. Yes. And my role is I'm the snitch. <laughs> Say I won't. I'm the one that's like, oh, are you supposed to be watching YouTube videos before school? <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> I love Elijah, I'm very close with Elijah. I'm his godmother, I'm Nina. So we have the anti-nephew relationship. I've been in his life since day one. Literally the day he was born, I was in the hospital room. I saw his head come out and go right back in. He wasn't ready, it was a long day. <laughs> I love Elijah, we're very close. He's my godson, but something happened. When they moved in, our dynamic shifted to be more like siblings who fight. And I realized we were both fighting for attention. <laughs> He's used to having his mom's attention all to himself. Then they move in with us and I'm like, my best friend lives with me, we're gonna hang out every day, this is gonna be great. So now I'm the thing in his way. But he's also the thing in my way. <laughs> he doesn't have siblings, so he doesn't know how to share. I don't have kids, I don't know how to share. So now we just bump heads. Sometimes Elijah and I will have good conversations with each other, but other times I just see him in the hallway and check it. <laughs> I snitch on Elijah, but he snitches on me too. Because we have security cameras around the house and he didn't know this at the time, but they record audio. I got a notification on my phone that there was motion in the backyard, so I click on it, what's this? And it's him talking to his mom, and he was complaining about me. <laughs> I'll tell you guys what happened right before that, give you a little bit of backstory. We were in the kitchen. He had just popped off at the mouth, was given an attitude, so I was like, okay, me too. <laughs> So she took him in the backyard to word him up and be like, what are you doing? You can't be giving an attitude, like something like that. I missed the beginning of the conversation. By the time I click on it, all I hear is him telling his mom, oh yeah, well why does Nina gotta be sarcastic? And little does he know, my sarcasm is what paid for this house. <laughs> so you're welcome. But now I have to chime in on my camera speaker. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sarcastic. <laughs> that hurt your feelings? Oh, <laughs> uh, well if Nina stops being sarcastic, you start being homeless. <laughs> Thank you.
we had another big change happen for us because uh, I was born and raised in California, spent my whole life there. Thank you. So never did I imagine that in the middle of a pandemic that I would be moving to Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you. Listen, that's very kind of you to cheer for that. (laughs) Because I am well aware that people from Nashville do not like Californians moving here. And hey, I get it. Me either. Let's cut it off after me. This is getting ridiculous. House prices are through the roof. Traffic is insane. This is not the Nashville I remember moving to. I'm learning a lot being a California girl living in the South, because it's different here. (laughs) I've learned when I go to a restaurant, if I order an iced tea, it automatically comes with three pounds of sugar in it. (laughs) Y'all call that sweet tea. We call it diabetes. Learning a lot. Very simple things, like when I'm in Los Angeles, if I go to a store and they're like, can I help you find anything? I'm like, I'm okay. And if I'm feeling really friendly that day, I'm like, I'm okay, thanks. (laughs) That's it, that's where it ends. (laughs) Then I got to Nashville. (laughs) I'm at TJ Maxx one day. (laughs) I can hear the ladies in the row next to me. Can I help you find anything? I'm all right, but thank you so much for asking. It's my pleasure. It's a beautiful day outside. Yes, it is, but they say it's gonna rain about three o'clock. Make sure you get home before the traffic. It's gonna be a mess. Bless your heart. like, ooh, I don't know if I have energy for the South. (laughs) I don't know how to do it. Like, who stops talking first? (laughs) Then I look around the corner and neither one of them even worked there. (laughs) And then somebody told me this. They were like, hey, When people say bless your heart, they can mean it in a good way or a bad way. And I was like, what? Like, how you do a bad bless? And they're like, no, trust me, sometimes that's not what they mean. So now, any time somebody tells me bless your heart just to be safe, I reply with, bless your heart. (laughs) Yeah, I wish you would bless my heart. (laughs) Bless it again, go ahead. (laughs) It's kind of like the old fighting words at church, I'ma pray for you. Oh, that's funny, because I'm already praying for you. (laughs) Yeah, you been on my prayer wall. (laughs) About to lay hands on you, too, say I won't. When we first got to Nashville, we were trying to figure out what part of the city we wanted to live in. Like, where do we fit in? Where do we vibe with? Finding out this county has good schools, this county doesn't. This county believes in COVID, this county doesn't. (laughs) 
Where do we fit? And I would tell my friends, I'd be like, hey, I want to live somewhere where I could get a lot of land. And they're like, okay, you want to head south. I'm like, okay, coo, 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 coo. But I also don't want my neighbor to be racist, so how far south? <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, are we talking Franklin or Pulaski? Like, how far? Because when you get to the deep, deep south, it's scary. I've seen movies. I'm not trying to do that. I mean, if they have a TJ Maxx there, I will pray about it. And I'm a good neighbor. Like State Farm, I'm there. I love my neighbors. I'm the one that has everybody's phone number. And if I haven't seen you in a while, I will send you a text. Are you good? Do I need to do a welfare check? I got your back because I love my neighbors. Every holiday season, I'm gonna get my neighbors a gift. Not the whole neighborhood, just the houses I can see from a front window. <laughs> because I love my neighbors, as long as they love me. And I know that's not how the Bible verse goes. <laughs> but that is my interpretation. This is not the new King James version. This is a new Queen Angela version. This is Angela 514. <laughs> Do unto me as you want to get done. <laughs> That's how you say amen in my Bible. <laughs> you could come to my Bible study. It's on Tuesdays. Learning a lot. One thing I learned right out the gate is allergies are a whole different beast in the South. Because when I live in Los Angeles, we don't really get all the seasons. We get summer and fire. So Zyrtec works just fine there. Then I get here, come to find out Zyrtec lost their subscription or something. It did not work. One day I went to pour the Zyrtec pill in my hand and the wind just blew it off. It was like, don't bother. <laughs> it's so fun waking up every morning playing COVID or allergies. <laughs> you guys know that game? Where you wake up in the morning and your sinuses are doing a weird thing and you're like, wait a minute, hold on. Am I dying or did I have dairy? <laughs> Can I taste anything? Get me some peanut butter. Can I taste? I was actually really lucky. For the first two years, I did not get COVID at all. And then earlier this year, she got me, little ho. <laughs> she gets around that one. <laughs> at this point, I know more people who have had it than who have not had it. I know people who have had it with no symptoms whatsoever. And I know people personally who have passed away from it. So my heart goes out to anybody here who has lost somebody from COVID. I've been tested for it many times. And the first time I got tested, my friends tried to warn me about it. They were like, yo, it's intense. And it actually wasn't that bad. Probably because they let me do it myself. <laughs> yeah, they gave me the Q-tip. And they're like, okay, you want to go all the way in your sinuses? And I was like, okay. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> How about I just put it in my nostril and I wiggle it a lot? <laughs> Can you test boogers? I'll give you some of those. <laughs> the second time I got COVID tested, the nurse did it, and he went all the way up in there to where like my eyelids started closing. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you're manually closing my eyelid. <laughs> He's like, it's not that far up there. I was like, nah, bro, you're in my brain. <laughs> like, you're giving basic commands at this point. <laughs> like, if I punch you, it's not my fault. You did it. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm sorry. I was like, no, 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 don't apologize. Just while you're up there, do you mind scraping out some of my childhood trauma? That'd be great. <laughs> Imagine if that was a real option. 
Get your childhood trauma scraped out with a COVID test. You'd catch me at the CVS pharmacy drive through like once a week. They're like, can we help you? Hi, I'm here for my COVID test. Also, when I was eight, my mom forgot me at the store. Another thing I've learned living in the South is the bugs are bigger. <laughs> Y'all got some Nashville geographic stuff happening here. <laughs> like in California, we have bugs, but our bugs are kill. <laughs> then I get to Nashville. I went to get in my shower one morning. There was a spider in my shower. Now this spider was so big, I thought I was interrupting him. I did, I went to open the shower curtain. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know anybody was in here, my bad. <laughs> he was big and he was furry too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if I should brush it or smush it, I didn't know. <laughs> he was so furry, he had dander. <laughs> I need my Zyrtec pill just for the spider dander. <laughs> I was like, sir, the head and shoulders is right there. Help yourself. If I ever have to kill a spider that big, I am morally conflicted. Because at that point, that's a pet. <laughs> Put a collar on that thing, that's Bubba. <laughs> Bubba had plans that day. He was just getting started, he's in the shower. <laughs> that's messed up. If you ever have to kill a spider that big, you could hear the crunch. And if you hear the crunch, you know that thing had a soul. <laughs> That's messed up. I used to kill any spider or bug that was around me because I don't like bugs at all. But over the past couple of years, I have this newfound respect for nature and insects. So now if I ever see a spider in my house, what I like to do is scoop it up in a container, take it outside, throw it in a bush, and then immediately go like this. <laughs> But if I'm left with no choice and I have to kill a spider, I now like to start with an apology. <sighs> Listen, sir. I know you weren't expecting this today. I'll be honest, neither was I. Truth is, I don't know you. You could be poisonous and you could kill me. So at this point, it's either me or you. And I have chosen you. There was this one night, I was home alone, by myself. Cause that's what home alone means. And I was watching The Night Stalker. Did you guys see that one? The documentary about the serial killer that was in Southern California like back in the 80s. So I'm home alone watching this show, super creepy, episode's done, I turn the TV off, and all of a sudden, I hear this on my front window. I said, nope. <laughs> I ran to my room. I put on every piece of clothing that I own. I said, if he's gonna try to assault me, he's gonna have to work real hard. <laughs> I don't have no weapons in the house. What's my self-defense weapon? Denim, three pair. After a while, nobody came in the house, but I kept hearing the noise. <laughs> Finally, I go to the window, I move the curtain, I look outside, and it's not a psychopath trying to kill me. It was a mosquito. <laughs> the size of a bald eagle. <laughs> or maybe it was a cicada. I don't know. I never seen a cicada in my life, but everybody kept telling me, oh, it's cicada season. Maybe it was one of those. Maybe it was a mix of both. Maybe it was a muscata, I don't know. Some Nashville Geographic stuff happening. 
This was the kicker for me, though. There was one night I was driving home, and I'm pulling into my driveway, and what do I see? A snake slithering across. That's where I draw the line right there. That's where I was like, all right, you know what, Nashville? Bless your heart. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. I'm not a big fan of wild snakes. Pet snakes, I'm okay with. Like, if there was a snake right here and he came with a cosigner, <laughs> like, he came with a guy that was like, oh, yeah, that's my pet. He's cool. I like that snake. That's a good snake. Him? I don't know him. <laughs> he probably had that snake since he was a baby. He probably just ate a baby. <laughs> Pet snakes, I'm okay with. Like, you know how sometimes you go to a real touristy area and there'll be that one guy with like a hundred pound snake around his neck and he's just walking around. He's like, yeah, you wanna take a picture with my snake? I'm like, I'll do it. He's like, all right, 20 bucks. Hey, I don't need no picture. <laughs> but the point is, I was down. I was going to do it if it was free. <laughs> because free is my love language. <laughs> Learning a lot. Being a California girl, living in the South, I actually had my very first tornado warning experience. And like I said, I'm from California. We don't get tornadoes in California. We get earthquakes. Now, earthquakes are scary for people who have never experienced one. But actually, they're not that bad. To be honest, I will take an earthquake over a tornado any day. Like, let me tell you. Give me a 3.5, a solid four, I will ride that quake like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But a tornado though? I don't know anything about tornadoes. This is what happened. <laughs> we were asleep. It was 3 a.m. I get one of those amber alerts on my phone. The alert that goes off real loud. And I was like, okay, first of all, what child is getting kidnapped at 3 a.m. that they need to wake me up to tell me about it? What VIP child is this? That they think at 3 a.m. I'm gonna run outside looking for Honda Civics. A silver one, it's always silver. I check my phone, whose kid is this? And it says, tornado warning, take cover now in a basement. Ooh, my heart started beating so fast. I said, oh my God, do we even have a basement? I don't even know. Because I'm from California, we don't do basements in California. That's dangerous because there could be an earthquake. I wake up my husband, I was like, babe, babe, we got an alert on the phone. It says there's gonna be a tornado. We gotta go in the basement. Do we have a basement? Now, my husband is an army brat. He grew up everywhere. He spent a lot of time in Kansas, and he was like, oh, we used to get these all the time. Don't even worry about it. Just go back to sleep. <laughs> to sleep? <laughs> but they just woke me up. <laughs> I don't think that's what they want. He was like, what county is it in? Oh yeah, that's like five miles away. We're good, we could watch it from the front. <laughs> he went back to sleep. Wasn't even stressed at all. I got up, I said, oh no, this is an emergency. <laughs> we sleep with one of those sleep sound machines that plays like the rain sounds. So we were already in the midst of a storm. We had our own storm going on. It was on surround sounds, it was real loud. There was stuff blowing up on the windows, but I didn't even notice because I just thought it was a good episode that night. I was like, ooh, this one's realistic, favorite.
I get up, I turn the sleep machine off, and that is when we can hear the tornado sirens outside. <laughs> then my husband, go, 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 get up, go, go, get up, go. What? But you said we could watch it. We both start freaking out. I'm grabbing things we don't even need, like Windex, a stapler. Where do we go? <laughs> Turns out we do have a basement. Guess where it is? Outside. <laughs> like we're in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> we keep it locked for safety. <laughs> and we keep the key in the junk drawer in the kitchen. <laughs> you highly underestimate what you consider junk until you're in an emergency situation. <laughs> Now, I don't know how you guys keep your junk drawers at home. Maybe you're highly organized. I open up my drawer, I gotta sift through a bunch of dead batteries, expired coupons, hella rubber bands. We don't even use rubber bands. But every time we get one, we gotta save it, why? What is so sacred about a rubber band that we can't throw it away? Whether it came wrapped around the newspaper or asparagus, it's in the drawer now. And that asparagus rubber band, that's a good one. Ooh. We better save this. Got about 86 keys in here. We don't even have 86 locks. Finally find the basement key. We go outside, unlock the door, get down into the basement, and that is when we realize that we are fully unprepared for this situation. <laughs> we have no emergency necessities down there. No water, no food, no batteries, nothing. Just me, my husband, and hella spiders. <laughs> and they were all looking at me real suspect-like too. Like they recognize me. That's her. <laughs> Listen, ma'am, I know you weren't expecting this today. <laughs> but this is from my homie Bubba right here. While we were trying to figure out what part of the city we wanted to live in, my husband and I were staying in a studio apartment. Now, I don't know if anybody here has ever lived in a studio apartment before, but when you're young and single, that's banging. It's convenient. Like, you'll be in your living room watching TV. You're like, you know what? I'm tired. I want to go lay down in the bedroom. Boom, already there. <laughs> convenient when you're young and single. However, studio apartment living when you're married isn't real conducive to staying married. <laughs> because you have no personal space. Like at our old house, if we got on each other's nerves, he goes to this room, I go to that room, we cool off, we're fine. Now in a studio apartment, if we get in an argument, when we're done arguing, we just gotta keep looking at each other's stupid faces. <laughs> you know how hard that is? That is challenging. That should be a TikTok challenge, do that one. <laughs> and my husband's good looking. Typically he's really fun to look at. But if we have been arguing, I will make all his pretty features real ugly real quick. <laughs> I'll be like, you know what? You see how your teeth are perfectly straight and you don't need a retainer? That's annoying. 
And like, we get it. You have perfect bone structure. Honestly, you have no character in your face. Get a scar. <laughs> if we get into an argument, my husband doesn't want to call it an argument. He wants to call it a talkament. <laughs> Just the fact that he wants to call it a talkament, to me, now we're in a full-blown argument. He wants to call it a talk a minute because he wants to talk it out. Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's get to the root of the problem. And when my husband talks it out, he likes to talk in circles. Circles are his favorite shape. <laughs> he likes to say the same thing he just said, but a little bit differently. Because <laughs> he's talking it out. <laughs> and when my husband talks it out, he likes to ask a lot of questions. Questions, 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 questions. He thinks he's being inquisitive. I think that I'm on the stand and I need to defend myself in a court of law. <laughs> questions, 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 questions. Yeah, I know you said that, but why? No, I know that's what you said, but why? I don't know why. Yes, you do. Objection, badgering a witness. <laughs> he's like overruled, but why? No, I know that's what you said, but why? Because that's how I feel. Okay, that's your feelings, but what's your facts though? That's how you feel, but what are your facts to support your feelings? Oh, you're stupid, that's my facts. <laughs> and it's not that my husband is stupid, it's just that I don't know how to talk a mint. <laughs> I can start in a talk a mint. We're just having a conversation. We're both calm until he triggers me, <laughs> which is like sentence number three. <laughs> and then next thing you know, here come my emotions. They weren't even invited to this party, but they showed up up there though, ready to say some stuff. <laughs> the more questions he asks, the more worked up they get. Questions, 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 questions. Next thing you know, here go my emotions out of my mouth. <laughs> and when I'm in an argument, my words come out like little shanks. <laughs> He's over here trying to talk a minute, and I'm just like, kick, 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 kick. And now I have a bloody word massacre to clean up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I was just trying to win. <laughs> My therapist hates that joke. I am working on it though. I am working on my communication. I wish I could be more like my friend Maya. She's so calm, cool, and collected all the time. One day I asked her, I was like, girl, do you ever get in an argument with your husband? She was like, yes. She started telling me about an argument they got in and he had said something to her and she was like, okay, see, when you say that, it makes me feel like what you're saying is I'm doing it wrong. And then he was like, oh no, that's not how I meant it at all. I'm so sorry it came out that way. That was their argument. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> how do you do that? Like, how many COVID swabs do you need up there? <laughs> to respond like that. Like, no emotions involved just clearly communicating. When you say that, it makes me feel like what you're saying is I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> me in that same conversation, oh, so I can't do nothing right then? <laughs> wow, so why you even married to me? I'm working on it. 
Living in a studio apartment when you're married, things that are normally easy are all of a sudden difficult, like watching TV. In a studio apartment, you have to both want to watch TV at the same time. Then you have to want to watch the same thing at the same volume preference. <laughs> Now, I don't know if my husband is hard of hearing, <laughs> but to him, if the TV is not at volume 85 or above, it might as well be on mute. <laughs> God forbid I bring the volume down to 65. He will passive aggressively put on the captions. <laughs> it's his silent way of yelling at me. If my husband cannot feel the vibration of every word coming out of the TV. Not loud enough. And we watch different stuff. My husband likes to watch UFC fights and the Hallmark Channel. He's very diverse. He's into extreme violence and Candace Cameron Bure. Me, I just want to watch anything murdery, rapey. Those are my shows. All the crime shows. If there is not an investigation to be had, a bad guy to be caught, a soothing narrator voice telling me how the woman's body was dragged behind the building, then I don't want to watch it. I like all the crime shows. Whether it's a network procedural drama like Law & Order, NCIS, SWAT, Criminal Minds, FBI, like anything Dick Wolf, yes, I'ma watch that. But I also love the docu-series shows, Forensic Files, The First 48. That's my show. And I travel a lot with stand-up, so a lot of times I go to cities that are always on that show. And I'll arrive in that city and I'll be like, oh my God, I'm in Dade County. I could totally get murdered right now. Like I get all starstruck. My favorite one is Law & Order SVU. Yes. Anybody watching the spin-off Organized Crime with Detective Stabler? Let's talk about Stabler for a second. <laughs> Christopher Maloney plays Detective Elliot Stabler. He was on Law & Order SVU for a very long time. And then he left the show for 10 years. And then he came back. Now, I don't know what he did while he was away. I don't know what they call that. Intermittent fasting, <laughs> protein shakes, keto. I don't know what he did. But when he got on the scene, I got flustered. I did. I was like, oh my God, Stabler. Stop flirting with me. And the day after that premiere episode, he posted on Instagram that it was his 60th birthday. And I was like, wait a minute. Hold on, do I have a crush on my dad's friend? <laughs> what? That's weird, cause Stapler could get it. <laughs> Let's go, 60. Watching TV with my husband is difficult, but at least it's not watching TV with my dad. That is a whole different experience. Like if you come to the house and you start watching a movie with my dad and they say way too many cuss words, he gets real religious. God forbid they say the F word, he'll be like, oh, forgive them, father. <laughs> my dad's the guy who during an action scene, he is counting the amount of bullets coming out of a gun for accuracy. <laughs> and the second they go over the allotted amount of bullets for that type of gun, he has something to say about it. You think you're just watching a movie. He's silently fact-checking. <laughs> ah, come on. 
man. 47 bullets and a Glock. This isn't real. Really, Dad? The bullets is what made it not real? Not the zombies they were shooting? And why is it so awkward when you're watching a movie with your parents and a sex scene comes on? I am a grown adult and it is still awkward. And my dad makes it even worse because he gets visibly uncomfortable. He starts shifting around in his seat. He's sweating, mumbling things under his breath, like, great, now they're gonna do it. <laughs> Speaking of people doing it, I have a story. When I was younger, in my 20s, I shared an apartment with my friend Vanessa, and her room faced the apartment building across the way. Well, there was a couple in that building that they liked to do the SEX. <laughs> with the windows open and the blinds open, like that was their jam. So anytime they would start going at it, she would call me on the phone in my room and be like, they're doing it again, hurry up, get over here. <laughs> And I'd be like, ew, and then I go running over there. <laughs> but by the time I get there, they already started closing the blinds and the windows. I'm like, oh man, missed it again. <laughs> and not like I was gonna sit there and watch like a creeper, but <laughs> it is kind of a sight to be seen. <laughs> like, are you guys trying to tell me that if you were walking down the street in your neighborhood and you saw your neighbors going at it in the front window, you wouldn't give it a look. You wouldn't be just minding your own business like... You went to a lap. <laughs> it's kind of like a car accident on the highway. You don't want to see a car accident happen. But if one is there, <laughs> you're gonna assess the situation. <laughs> Same thing, you see your neighbors going at it in the window, you just gotta assess the situation. <laughs> ah, we got a fender bender. bend her all the way over. <laughs> Living in a studio apartment when you're married, it's very difficult. But there is one good thing about it, I will say this, one good thing. We could only fit a smaller size bed in the apartment, so my husband had no choice but to cuddle me at night. Which I love, but he hates because he says I'm the hottest person alive. And to that I say thank you so much. My husband says I'm like a furnace. Any other furnaces in the building tonight? Yeah. He'll get in the bed and be like, seriously, babe, you don't feel yourself? <laughs> we like to sleep with the bedroom at sub-zero temperatures. Yeah. But I like all the blankets on, so I'm nice and cozy with my face a little bit cool. <laughs> he likes 
No blankets on, just skin to air contact. Psychopath. I have to negotiate cuddle time with my husband. Like, he'll get in the bed and I try to cuddle him and he'll be like, babe, come on, it's hot. Seriously, babe, it's hot. I can't sleep if I'm hot, come on. And I'll be like, just give me two minutes of cuddling. He'll be like, okay, fine. Siri, set a timer for two minutes. <laughs> and if he even tries to pull away before that buzzer goes off, I'm like, nice try, 30 second penalty. I got a tip for all the furnaces out there. This is a tip, this is what I do. I go to bed first, and I pretend like I'm asleep like an angel. <laughs> then I wait for him to get in the bed, get nice and comfortable. This is the trick right here. You gotta wait for his breathing to slow down. Right when it gets nice and slow, that's when you just spider leg him up. <laughs> Welcome to Tarantula's Web. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> if my husband tries to tell me that it's too hot to cuddle, I'll be like, okay, can you rub my feet then? And I'm very grateful because anytime I ask my husband to rub my feet, he will do it. But it only lasts about two minutes and then he gives up. And then I have to tap my foot to let him know he's not done yet. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> boo boo. <laughs> it's not even time for your first 15 minute break. Yellow. <laughs> and then he starts rubbing my feet again for maybe another three minutes. And then he just taps out. And this is how my husband tells me that he is done rubbing my feet. He goes like this. <sighs> he gets the most aggressive hand cramp. <sighs> Cancel all my plans this week. <laughs> when I do finally get my husband to cuddle me at night, he likes to whisper sweet nothings. It's really cute. He'll say things like, I just want you to get off me. <laughs> it's so romantic. Living in a studio apartment when you're married is difficult because you have no personal space. It's like every time I turn around, my husband's there. I turn around, he's right here, turn around, he's right there. Like, whoa, weren't you just here? How'd you do that? <laughs> every time I turn around, he's there. It reminds me of a song I know called Totally Clips of the Heart. <laughs> you guys remember that song? Well, I felt like it was time for a remake, so I wrote some new lyrics. You wanna hear it? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it for you guys. But here's the thing. I need your help. I need you guys to sing all the turnaround parts. Do you know what I mean? All right, let's do a practice round. Okay, because only seven of you knew what I meant. You guys do all the turnarounds, but nothing else. Practice round, here we go. Turn around, him and I'm an even, I'm an even, I'm an even, I'm an even, I'm an even. That was pretty good. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be that good. I don't know if they sat you guys in section by soprano and alto, but that was harmonious. Maybe you guys listened to the song on the way here, I don't know. But it was fresh in your mind. Okay, this is Totally Clips of the Heart, remake 
based on my time living in a studio apartment with my husband. <laughs> you guys do all the turnarounds, I'll do everything else. Here we go. I'll start. <laughs> Turn around every now and then I get some time to myself and then you ruin it by chewing too loud. Every now and then I reminisce of the times when I could pee without you being around. around. There you go again, how did you get there so fast? Weren't you just standing right behind me somehow? Oh my God, when will I be back inside a house where I can have more than one room? Where you're not near me when I zoom? Where upon a time I had him to myself now feels like a tiny motel there's nothing I can do I'm totally living in hell <laughs> Nashville thank you so much I love you Like what I found that my husband was leaving behind. A very nice picture of me. No, it wasn't. Just who cares, right? Bonzo has not seen it empty yet. When you moved in, I got y'all. Fan base in the bad style. Trying to take pics with my in my hand like damn, y'all. It's a fam, y'all. No new friends. My money tight, no loose ends. This creed, y'all. That new sense I build. There's no train that's more than two miles long, babe. You know the history of trains? It's not, I've seen trains. I've been on trains. I've never seen a train. So what do you think this is? A pretend train? So get on my level. Get on my level. Don't care what they say. You're not on my level. We out here in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas. If your Bass Pro Shop isn't this big, are you even Bass Proing? We made it to Nashville. So get on my level. Get on my level. Huh. You trying too hard, you not on my level. So get on my level. Don't care what they say, you not on my level. <laughs> Thank you very much.